Oh, we already got a question. We'll answer that at the end. So if you're joining us, um, you're joining us just now, uh, welcome to Science Beneath the Surface, the skin from underneath. Um, if you have a question, you can uh, write that question in the Q&A box in the bottom of the Zoom control panel, okay? And uh, we have a couple people, a couple uh, great reps, or sorry, great people at Camp Prep answering questions on the back end. And I'm gonna answer some questions at the, at the end of the uh, presentation tonight. All right, so let's get started. One lucky winner tonight is going to go away with this rad giveaway. Um, all of these products from CanPrev, and we're going to talk about them all, all tonight. So look for your look for an email in your inbox afterwards. I hope you win. I love all these products. I'm, you're going to see it. It's going to be great. All right. So let's do a little introduction of myself. I almost wore that shirt tonight, actually. That would have been funny. Um, I'm a licensed naturopathic. I'm a Dr. Rory Gibbons, naturopathic doctor uh, based out of British Columbia. So that's why I'm on PST time tonight. I'm a father of two little boys. So one's three, one's five months. So lots going on over at my house. I have a high interest in functional nutrition and how micronutrients affect the biochemistry of our body. It makes sense to me. Um, I like biochemistry. I didn't know that until naturopathic medical school, but here I am. I'm passionate about it. And that's why I love these products because we're, it, it really, you'll see how the, the, the ingredients go with the biochemistry of the body. Uh, I'm a speaker. That's why I'm here. I'm an author. I, I'm, I have a husband. I'm, <laughs> I am a husband. I have a wife. I'm a father, a cyclist. I love being outside. Uh, and I, I like Star Wars, kind of a fun fact. I don't have any tattoos of any Star Wars stuff, but I still like the movies. So first things first, let's talk about the skin, a little kind of anatomy review, uh, for lack of better words. Um, don't worry, it's not too crazy. The top level up here is called the epidermis. So epi meaning above, and it has multiple layers. It is the outermost layer. And this is where you put all of the topical stuff on. So sunscreen, sunblock, moisturizers. All right, the next layer below that is called the dermis. And then under that is the hypodermis. So root cause skin health, health starts from beneath the surface, hence the name of the presentation. So certain nutritional products are made to make your insides healthy and make you glow outwards. Right? So instead of applying products on top of the skin, which could be sometimes considered masking a problem that is occurring deeper. This doesn't mean that all topical products are bad by any means. And we will see in a moment that sometimes we absolutely need them. The nutrients that I'll be talking about tonight, uh, tonight uh, affect all three levels. And as you'll see, these products are designed to improve your skin on a cellular level. Um, so fundamental factors for good skin health. These are things that you can do every single day to improve the health of your, uh, of your skin. So first thing, um, hydration, easy rule here, drink water until your pee is clear and colorless, depending on your body weight, this will depend, determine how much you, you drink during the day or your requirement. Limit refined and processed sugars. Okay. When we eat refined sugar, Products such as pop, candy, cookies, this elicits a response where insulin is released into the blood. And we know that insulin, when it's unregulated, is a driver of inflammation. More on that later. Uh, limiting alcohol, okay? So when we do this, there's less toxin levels that need to be cleared out. Like alcohol is, is not really supposed to be in there, okay? So we need to deal with it and get it out. And when there's an abundance of toxins, uh, in the body, it can sometimes reflect through the skin. So this is one easy way of kind of like reducing that, that toxin load. Regular exercise, regular sweating does the skin wonders, not to mention your heart, blood, kidneys, muscles, pain levels, the libido, mood, break, on and on and on and on and on. You can definitely see where I'm going with that and I could talk about it all day long. Um, get a healthy dose of sun. No burning though, right? Don't burn. If you have burned, you have gone too far. Okay. Pay attention to your skin in the sun and take breaks. People usually will know how long too long is. Okay. So before you feel crispy, take a break by getting in the shade. Managing stress. Hmm. This sounds familiar. 
This benefits us on a many uh, levels, but for the skin, this is usually connected to blood sugar and insulin. Again, more on that later. Uh, eat healthy fats every day, every meal, okay? Omega-3 fatty acids found in avocados, olive oil, fish, nuts, seeds. They're good for us, we need them, and we need to eat them. That will tie nicely into our um, omegas that we talk about later. <clears throat> Here's some external things that can affect the skin. And you probably know this, but let's just talk about them um, a little bit more in depth. So too much sun. Too much sun can damage DNA, which is ultimately in charge of making new cells. If DNA is damaged, there is a chance that mutated cells can evolve, which can lead to skin diseases down the road. Now, the body has a mechanism built in that helps to avoid that from happening, but ultimately too much sun can increase the chances of this happening, okay? So UVA, easy way of understanding what that means, is in charge of aging the skin. So you think of aged skin, you think of like kind of like saggy skin when someone gets older, right? So the UVAs have gone through the upper level of the skin and affected the deeper structural level, okay? And that's what causes this, this skin um, to, to sag, okay? Uh, UVB, in charge of burning the skin. I've had people say that one UV is good one and one is the bad, and it's not really a thing, okay? They both are healthy in low doses, but just, and potentially detrimental in higher doses. Topicals, okay, skin soaks up the topical products that we put on them. So that means you're putting chemicals on your skin. They, and if you are, if the, if the product you're using is full of like chemicals that you don't really understand the uh, name of them, um, they're getting absorbed and then we have to deal with them later. Okay, so similar thing as, as alcohol, we have to deal with that toxin. Okay, those things go into the liver and are processed. And if they are toxic to our body, then we need to get rid of them. Okay, so this could potentially be contributing to something called liver burden, which can present on the surface of the skin. So usually when we're treating skin conditions, there is a liver component that we're looking at. Cortisone creams, very common for people to have cortisone creams on them uh, or to use them for whatever reason. They're very, very effective in eliminating inflammation on the skin, but over time it can make the skin thinner and then further cause cracks and loss of integrity of the skin. So address the cause of the skin problem and then use that as needed to, as we go through the, the healing, okay? Radiation from x-rays. Exposure can change the DNA in the cells, but this depends on the exposure duration and frequency. I just wanted to bring that up um, shortly. Um, because it comes up in my visits. So a few little skin terminologies here, uh, just some words that come up throughout the presentation. Wrinkles, it's a depression in the outer layer of the skin. Elasticity is referring to the ability of the skin to go back to the original shape. Uh, density is how plump the skin looks and feels. Suppleness, pliant and flexibles. Um, and smoothness is, is an even consistency over the skin. So nutrients we're gonna to talk about tonight, uh, essential fatty acid, we're gonna cover collagen. Everyone's wondering about collagen since seeing that big bottle on the front page. Uh, silicon, which goes along nicely with collagen. Uh, biotin, vitamin B7, ceramides, these are super cool. And ashwagandha and L-theanine. Very interesting why we're bringing this in tonight. Let's talk about healthy hair, first of all. Okay, I know we're, it's a topic, it's a presentation on skin, but skin, but hair lives on the skin. All right, so we gotta give it some TLC too. And by doing that, we can also improve skin health. So usually the main concern we see around hair is hair loss and hair shedding, okay? So what's the difference? Loss, hair loss is when the hair stops growing and falls out. It stops growing, okay? It won't start growing again until the cause of the problem is identified and treated, okay? So shedding, when hair continues to grow, but more that hair than usual falls out each day. So they're still growing, but it's just not staying in there. Why is this happening? So we need to address the cause of the problem and provide the hair the tools it needs, okay? And so sometimes these hair loss phases can be disrupted uh, like the, the growth phase can be disrupted. And one example, common example is hypothyroidism. And this product, as we will see, can certainly help to an extent symptomatically, but it is imperative to address the hypothyroidism, not just for the hair issue, but for other 
health-related issues as well that can be affected by hypothyroidism. Um, inadequate anchorage into the scalp can lead to hair loss. And is this person depleted in nutrients? Things like B6 and zinc and biotin are called cofactors for a reason. They help create and sustain the hair. So if one of these one if one of these nutrients is missing or it's depleted, the process by which hair is made can be can be changed. Okay, in a negative um, uh, in a negative way. So what's in it? Very cool stuff here. Um, healthy hair uses a patented ingredient called Caronat. Caronat is a GMO-free, gluten-free millet and wheat extract ingredient. It's gluten-free <laughs> from millet and wheat. How is it? Okay, I will tell you. Um, the millet is gluten-free naturally, but meliacin and ceramicides are both lipids. And that means fats. And they are what is being extracted from the millet and wheat. Probably didn't think that there was fat in in millet and wheat until this moment. Meliacin is from millet and cer ceramides are from the wheat and gluten. Where's gluten fit in? Gluten is the protein, which is in the, it, it, which is the protein in the wheat, okay? Ceramides are the fat in the wheat, protein is the, uh, sorry, gluten is the protein in the wheat. So by only extracting the fat, we keep the product gluten-free. So every batch is rigorously tested to make sure it is gluten-free completely. So celiacs, you're good to go. Uh, it also contains B6, biotin, and zinc, and in uh, in volumes that are at our RDA recommended daily amount values, and we know they are cofactors, so we know that they're just helping that overall hair health. We're something another really cool thing about this product is uh, that I wanted to share was that the millet and wheat that is harvested, it's harvested in the Chambord region of France by a network of family farms that work in a sustainable agricultural farming community. Caronat, that, uh, that patented ingredient, is clinically proven to reduce both hair loss and shedding by about 50% after three months of use. That's not that long. And best results are shown at six months. And it does three things. It strengthens the anchorage into the scalp, kind of like a tree growing in the earth. It increases the growth phase of, this, uh, of the hair. Okay. And it also uh, delays the resting phase of the hair. Okay, the resting phase is the phase at which it stays in there and then it drops out. So delays that phase, so more hair stays in there. <clears throat> so what you'll notice, less hair coming out, uh, stronger hair follicles, shinier, brighter hair, uh, improved scalp dryness. Really interestingly, there's a, actually a registered health claim for this product for improvement in scalp dryness from six weeks onwards. Common question, what about men's hair? Well, that's a good question. Unfortunately, this has not been studied in men. Uh, all of the study participants were healthy women, 25 to 65. And for those men losing hair, the same rules kind of apply here, determine why they're losing hair, treat that and support with proper nutrients. And, uh, you know, seeing a naturopathic doctor would be, would be key in this situation. So we talked to, oh, we want to talk about ashwagandha and L-theanine. So this lovely product is called Adrenal Chill. Man, does that ever sound good right now? So anyone uh, have an ex unexpected elevation of stress in their lives recently? Any feeling, anyone feeling any extra pressure? Yeah, people are raising hands. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, raise hands, raise hands. Love it. So stress and skin. Stress is most likely a contributor to your common skin issues. Okay, so some common thoughts that I get or common um, comments that I get in my in my visits. Oh, I always get zitty during final exams. Okay? I get eczema when I'm stressed out. Uh, my psoriasis flares up during tax season. All of those are like stressful bouts. Okay. I ask every single patient about stress and it's because in my practice, the concerns that come in are usually rooted in chronic stress. It's a huge driver of day-to-day -day fatigue, gut issues, autoimmune disease and flare-ups, anxiety and depression and burnout is a thing. We cannot deny that. I see it all the time. When it comes to your skin, it can most certainly drive your skin condition to be worse. That's stress, okay? But why, why? Well, chronic stress can lead to an elevated level of cortisol being released, okay? 
that tells our body to produce more sugar. That means more insulin. And when that happens over time, there can be blood sugar and insulin dysregulation. And so we know that insulin, when, dis when not regulated, can cause inflammation, and this can lead to worsening of skin symptoms. And so let's attack this stress at it. Let's attack this issue at the, at the root, okay? So stress, it can be a, a contributing root cause here. So of course, you know, take this product. Yeah, it helps, but we also have to do some other lifestyle and dietary stuff. So lifestyle, moderate exercise every day, okay? Outside time. Tell my little guy, okay, we need to go outside to get some uh, get some energy energy out. Address your sleep, okay? Uh, diet, you know, less processed sugar, less caffeine, anything that is going to elevate cortisol and push that fight or flight nervous system. Um, the ingredients in this, if the ingredients in this uh, product are ashwagandha and L-theanine. So the ashwagandha, it's also known as withania. Uh, this certain ashwagandha that we're dealing with today is called KSM 66. It's a patented ashwagandha that has been well studied in regards to stress, anxiety, sexual function, and cardiovascular health. So in this situation, it has shown to reduce cortisol in the body and reduce its breakdown effects on the tissues. So we know that cortisol is a catabolic hormone in which it breaks things down. The L-theanine in this, uh, in adrenal chill, it's a calming amino acid, all right? It's here to calm the nervous system down, but that doesn't mean sedate the nervous system. It works to help in situations where acute calming is needed, okay? So that's within about 45 minutes. It crosses the blood-brain barrier and promotes alpha wave state in the brain, also known as restful wakefulness. <clears throat> Sounds good, restful wakefulness, like you're calmer, yeah, but you're still awake. And I recommend this to lots of people that do presentations like this one, uh, take exams or have to go into trial, those types of things as lawyers. Uh, common question, will I get gro groggy after this product? Nope. Obviously the effect of L-theanine is different for everyone, but generally this combo is calming, not sedating. Essential fatty acids. So let's clarify a couple of things. Essential fatty acids are fats that cannot be synthesized by the body. Okay, therefore it's essential to the diet. So omega-3s, omega-6s are two types of essential fatty acids and we will be talking about omega-3s tonight. So what does it do? Omega-3 fatty acids can be broken down to EPA and DHA. Simply put, EPA is more for inflammation, DHA is more for the nervous system. Uh, in this situation, EPA is doing the bulk of the work here, okay? So by taking omega-3s, we increase lipid levels in the epidermis. These lipids are fats. They're needed for cell membranes. Uh, it modulates inflammation, which is mainly the EPA. Uh, it provides protection from UV rays <clears throat> by reducing the skin sensitivity to the UV rays. Uh, it increases hydration, which is really interesting. Uh, but in this in situation, it improves water loss. So it retains water. So adding to that like smoother uh, appearance on the skin. It improves flexibility. So each cell in our body is encased in a lipid layer, which is soft and flexible, kind of like soft half inflated balloons. And lastly, uh, improve, improve smoothness. So it, by improving the elasticity of the, uh, by improving the elasticity of the membranes. So what does this translate to? Soft and smooth skin. Uh, they provide hydration and elasticity, which in turn promotes that softness and the smoothness. So eat your omega-3s. The liquids, more concentrated than the capsules. Um, these omegas are about two times more concentrated than the other fish oils on the market. And so when I use fish oils, I find that most of my patients see benefit from using high EPA type of omegas um, instead of high DHA. So those are the types that I usually use. There's definitely a time and place for high DHA type omega threes. I just wanted to bring this little icon right here to light. Okay. This is called the international fish oil standards. And, uh, it provides a way for companies to test their products to the highest quality, safety, and purity standards in the world, and then showcase their full testing results online for the world to see. 
So you could actually go online after the presentation, look up this and look up this product and you can see um, the data on it. This is an example of third party testing. I like this because it brings in some non-biased uh, opinions. Ooh, frequently asked questions about omegas. There's a hundred of them, but we're gonna talk about four of them. Uh, what if I'm a vegan? Yeah, it's a good question. Probably if you're a vegan, these are from fish, so you're not gonna use these ones, uh, but there are vegan sources of, of fish, of uh, omegas out there. They're usually higher in DHA, lower in EPA, um, usually lower concentrated, and they're more usually more expensive than uh, more expensive per serving of EPA and DHA. What if I have a shellfish allergy? Yeah, that's legit. <laughs> uh, that's a legit concern for sure. There's no shellfish in these products. Okay, so if you have an allergy to anchovy, sardine, or mackerels, don't use these things. What if I mix it? <clears throat> yeah, you can mix it. Uh, first of all. Or sorry, mix it to stuff to mask the taste, the fishy taste. First of all, fish oil should not taste fishy. Okay. Often patients will tell me, oh, fish oil, I can't stand that gross rotten fish taste. My response is me neither. Uh, something has gone wrong in the production of that fish oil. Okay. Either it was produced incorrectly on the production line, put in a bottle that doesn't filter light, or it's just too old and passes expiry. Uh, the Canprev fish oils, I can definitely attest that they tastes so good. I, I like this. I have this one right now that I'm taking. It tastes so delicious. I'm so like happy to, to promote that one. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You, if you want, you can pop it with a little bit of mango juice in a shot glass. If that helps get it down. Sometimes the texture is a little bit off for people. And there's a very minimal, minimal fish taste. Can you give it to teens? Yes. And there are dosing instructions on the bottle for that. But of course, you know, check with your naturopathic doctor to see if fish oil is the right option for you and your, you and your child and talk about what else is going on. Why do they need fish oil? <clears throat> All right, collagen. I love talking about collagen. I'm taking collagen myself. Um, this is a really fantastic protein and I'm really happy to talk about it tonight. Collagen is the most abundant protein in the body. Okay, it literally makes up everything. It's found throughout from your teeth to your toenail bed and pretty much everywhere in between, skin, muscle, cartilage, bones, organs, arteries, even your cornea, okay? You've heard the term, you're the glue that keeps the group together. Well, collagen is what keeps our body together, literally. Uh, the meaning is actually in the word itself, right here, collagen means glue and gen means genesis, <clears throat> so, glue making, I guess. <laughs> uh, think of collagen as the glue that binds your body together and gives your tissues their structure, okay? Without it, you'd be kind of like a puddle on the ground. Here's another little analogy here. Collagen, if this is your body right here, collagen is the bricks and silicon, which we'll be talking about a little bit later, is the mortar. And it helps to stick the collagen together and activate it as well. Very, very cool. So after about 25 years old, um, our collagen starts shifting into a state of catabolism, okay? So instead of anabolism. So catabolism means breaking down and anabolism means building up, okay? So this is where supplemental collagen comes into play and supports the building process of collagen in our body. It lives everywhere in our connective tissues. So let's break down exactly where, all right? Our connective tissue is made up of individual cells. Okay. The space between the cells is where the collagen lives. Okay, So if you imagine a suburban neighborhood where the houses are the cells, everything else that makes up the neighborhood, such as the lawns, driveways, patios, roads, mailboxes, it's the extracellular matrix. Okay, The extracellular matrix gives order and structure to the neighborhood, and this is where collagen lives. Okay. <clears throat> So difference between collagen and collagen peptides. Okay, just to clarify, we are talking now about collagen in a bottle. Okay, so collagen itself is actually considered a structural protein. Okay, compared to other proteins in the body like enzymes, hormones, and antibodies. Okay, it's made up of smaller components called peptides. So collagen peptides have been shown to be more bioavailable to the body, uh, mainly because they are less likely to be degraded by digestive enzymes. So this means that when we take a collagen peptide, we get more of it 
versus a collagen protein. These collagen peptides provide raw building blocks for collagen in the body, okay? And two, the collagen peptide binds onto the, the collagen maker, which is the fibroblast, and tells it to make more collagen. That's such an amazing thing, phenomenon that happens. So it, so it provides the raw building blocks, here you go, and, okay, go ahead, make more, fib make more collagen fibroblast. Like that's such an, an amazing thing that, that that collagen peptide does. This type of collagen peptide in, in the CanPrev products is uh, called Verisol Bioactive Collagen Peptides. It's a registered trademark to collagen, and there's some great research surrounding it. <clears throat> really quickly, these are amino acids. Those make up peptides, collagen peptides, and then multiple peptides make up collagen protein. Give you a bit of a visual there. So choosing a collagen, how the heck do you do that? So we want to look for a neutral smell and a neutral taste. All right. So solubility in water is also important. This means how well does it dissolve? So if it's collagen protein, it won't fully dissolve. I did this the other day. I, I to have like real world experience, I guess. I put a scoop up because I usually put my collagen um, peptides in my coffee. I put it in cold water the other day, mixed it up, and it was dissolved. And it didn't taste like anything. It was amazing. Um, we want to look at the cost of the product, okay? A general rule of thumb in retail, if a product is mass produced to make it cheaper, something must be sacrificed, okay? So in the supplement industry, it's usually quality of ingredient and sourcing of ingredient that gets um, sacrificed, unfortunately. Look for a collagen with a good brand reputation. Selecting something that, selecting a company that uses sustainable means to create their product, okay? A company that uses third-party testing like iFox. If you want to know more about testing in products, like contact the company and ask, and they'll probably tell you. And size matters. Size matters when it comes to looking at a collagen uh, product, okay? So the pieces of collagen that you're ingesting from a product should be really small, okay? Like two to five kilodalton small. That's a molecular weight. If they are not that small, then the product may lose its effectiveness, The collagen beauty liquid. <clears throat> Again, Verisol type of collagen. Uh, you will see visible skin results quickly. So improve wrinkles in 28 days. So the best results are after three months. Like 28 days, that's just shy of a month. And three months is like, it's not that long. <laughs> You'll see visible results. That's really impressive. Um, people that, are, that have cellulite you know, within three to six months of taking this, There'll be a less waviness in the skin, most likely from um, the like the collagen providing structure to the skin and and allowing water to stay there. Um, visible nail results, improved nail integrity within two months. Hair increased thickness after four months. You can kind of see where I'm going with this. Like those those outer proteins, like hair, skin, nails, they're all improving after a pretty short amount of time. And the size, two kilodaltons. This is specific for the skin. It's easily absorbed and it has an affinity to go to the skin and, and help the skin texture. It has a lovely orange citrusy taste. It's really easy to, to take. Also comes in um, powder. And this is where I was saying earlier, like I usually put it in my coffee because it just, just dissolves and you mix it up. And, and it's, you don't taste it, it's great. <clears throat> and it doesn't degrade by the heat of the coffee. Talk about a couple of collagen myths or four collagen myths. You need vitamin C to make collagen work properly. Mm, yeah, yes and no, more like in this situation, no. So not the hydrolyzed collagen. So we are giving you hydrolyzed peptides, vitamin C, is needed to change dietary proline and lysine, which are amino acids, into a usable hydroxylated form, okay? Basically, vitamin C is activating those two amino acids to work, okay? But we're giving you activated amino acids in, uh, in form of peptides in our, in our uh, collagen products, okay? Collagen supplements provide these amino acids, proline and lysine in their, their changed forms already. Okay, so people that don't eat meat 
and don't take collagen need vitamin C, okay? which they can get from their diet in the form of colorful fruits and veg and or take a supplemental form. <clears throat> You need marine collagen for skin and grass-fed collagen for joints. Yeah, this is all over the internet for sure when you Google what you need for skin, what you need for joints. And so the answer actually, it's kind of a myth. So the answer is no. There's no difference between these two because the only thing that matters is the peptide size, okay? So marine collagen is, the, the idea that marine collagen is better for skin, why is that? Because of marketing. Okay. People will spend more money on the way they look <laughs> versus the function of their joints and the production of collagen from marine sources is more expensive. Okay. Uh, if someone has allergies or personal ethics or pescatarian, yeah, okay, go with the, with the, the bovine sourced ones or the grass-fed collagens. But at the end of the day, we ultimately expect the same results from grass-fed versus marine. Okay. Size of collagen doesn't matter. Well, we know that it does matter. Two to five kilodaltons has shown to be the most specific and targeted tissues. So two kilodaltons for skin, five kilodaltons for bone, three for joints, that's the one I'm taking. Uh, bone broth is just as good. Mm, do we really know? Bone broth is good, but so are collagen peptides, okay? So it's difficult to compare because they both have different preparations. Bone broth is created when we boil down animal bones for hours and hours and hours, or an instant pot, you can cut that down. Uh, when cooked enough, collagen turns to gelatin, which turns wobbly when it cools, okay? So like we talked about earlier, to get to a peptide form, we need to use enzymes. Actually, we didn't talk about that specifically, but in order to get to a peptide form, we need to use enzymes to break it down, okay? So when we use enzymes, we can get collagen peptides, which we know are much more specific to the tissue than bone broth. Okay, so we're talking about the mortar now, okay? So silicon, the mortar to the bricks or the activator of collagen. Uh, basically, silicon helps collagen do its job, right? Which is keeping us together. Silicon is actually one of the most abundant trace elements in our body, and it helps to activate the hydroxylation enzymes that are essential to building strong collagen networks. So it helps use the amino acids that are already present from your diet without collagen supplementation. Okay, so it helps use the amino acids that you, that you eat from your diet without collagen supplementation. So in skin, silicon is associated with the synthesis molecules like hyaluronic acid, um, which traps water and combats skin dryness. It's also been shown to increase the number of collagen making fibroblasts. So more, more guys at the, at the uh, work site making collagen. <clears throat> Where do we get them? We can get them from beer, we can get them from green beans, whole grains. We can also get them from bananas, leafy greens, lentils, specifically the red lentils. So the type of silicon that we're talking about today is something called monomethyl selenotriol. Let's just call it MMST, um, just to keep it short and easy to listen to. It's a very unique form that is 100% water soluble and it's 100% stable. Okay, so other silicons actually need different mediums uh, or they'll clump up. Uh, they have a really awesome shelf life once they're open as well. Um, some other cool facts about MMST, they're really effective at increasing bone volume. Okay, so research, some research has shown that it's the same or sometimes better than bisphosphonate drugs for osteoporosis. This is absolutely incredible. Um, it does this by increasing bone builders, the osteoblasts, and decreasing bone degraders. Silicon also helps arterial tissue and makes it less permeable and more flexible. Okay? So higher pressure systems or higher pressure areas like the aorta and carotid arteries have 10 times more silicon than other arteries. Okay? So lots of pressure they need to expand and contract, need to expand and contract. This is a very bioavailable uh, nutrient to the body and there's a higher amount of actual silicon per weight than any other product on the market. <clears throat> it's a good one. So the takeaway here is that this form is readily absorbed and utilized by the body better than any other product you can find. 
We should also add that there's biotin in it, right? The biotin, also known as vitamin B7, um, is there to, it, it helps the silicon do its job. It's called one of those cofactors. And so what are you gonna see? You're gonna see improved improvement in suppleness and smoothness of the skin. So in other words, the skin becomes more pliable, plump and smooth, and that sounds good. Okay, so based on that information, which one do you use? Ideally both, okay? Skin, collagen, use that, that's your best bet. Um, hair and nails, probably silicone. But again, take them both and you build, that's a, the best combo you could do. And last one I wanted to talk about was these plant-based ceramides called beautiful skin. This is such a cool thing. Like I never thought that there was fat in wheat, you know? Uh, so ceramides, these naturally found in the outermost layer of the skin, okay, the epidermis. Over time, ceramide levels decrease naturally like collagen. So giving yourself uh, ceram ceramides is going to be beneficial. It's a gluten-free wheat extract, but wait, Again, how can it be gluten-free? Because it's a ceramide extract, which is not gluten. Okay, gluten is a protein, ceramide is the fat in the wheat. <clears throat> because it comes from wheat, each batch is tested rigorously to make sure it is gluten-free. That's important. What do they do? So they reinforce water barrier function of skin cells and permits water retention. Okay, so it holds that water in there and it's going to push up and get rid of any wrinkles or cracks, okay? There's some, something else in the product called DGDG, and this is also known as digalactosal diglyceride. And so that is really cool because it helps to absorb and metabolize ceramides. So you can kind of see a little trend here, like biotin was, was added to the uh, silicon, to, as a cofactor in healthy hair, there's biotin, zinc, and um, and one other that was there to help with uh, the Karenat. So we're we're trying to combine um, the smaller cofactors with the larger uh, ingredients to maximize the effectiveness of it. So wait a minute, ceramide versus ceramicide. What are you talking about? Ceramicide is the combo of ceramide and, and DGDG. Okay, so ceramide is the fat, ceramicide is the, the fat and the DGDG. Where can you get it? Soybeans, dairy, eggs, sweet potatoes, wheat germ, corn, brown rice. So what does it do for you? Uh, it increases ceramide production in the outermost layer of the skin. So 50% of the skin is ceramides, okay? Improves moisturization, okay? It increases ceramides, increase water retention, improves skin elasticity by in inhibiting elastase, which degrades elastin, and this promotes elasticity, right? We can see some little stats right here. There's a 16% increase in skin moisturization, okay? Um, clinically proven to reduce wrinkles in 15 days. That's two weeks. That's wild. 18% of increase in skin elasticity. As I said before, it inhibits the elastase action, which is it's an enzyme. It degrades the flexible elastin protein. And lastly, 80% of subjects perceived a difference in the skin. That's eight out of 10 people said, yeah, you know what? After taking this product, I see a difference. So you're probably thinking like, hmm, throughout this presentation, people are popping into your head like, Oh, I wonder if it can help with so-and-so's this or so-and-so's that. And so it's a great question for everybody listening. And I wonder if it will help with psoriasis. I wonder if it'll help with eczema. And the answer is yes, probably. But you or this person that you're thinking of, they ha we have to determine the underlying cause of the skin condition and treat that as well as supporting the outer layer of the skin, okay? So this product being something to support that outer layer. Beautiful Skin is vegan and celiac friendly. Um, it's 100% vegan, 100% gluten-free. So if you don't want to take an animal collagen product, that's co totally cool. This would be helpful for hair, skin, and nail due to the ceramide content in it. 
So I threw a lot of information at you guys. That was pretty awesome. Um, and I still feel like I was only scraping the surface, but let's do a quick little recap and then we'll get to some questions. So first thing, um, we have to understand that skin health doesn't just come from a bottle. Okay, so remember those lifestyle um, uh, recommendations at the beginning, you know, exercise, hydration, you know, sugar, alcohol, those types of things. Those are all very important. We need to address the underlying cause of the skin issue. If we don't treat that at the same time as supporting the skin, then we'll never really reach full resolution. So lifestyle and dietary habits must be addressed. Yeah, we just mentioned that. Um, the one thing I wanted to add in was gut health. There's a very close correlate, very, very close relationship between the gut and the skin. So now you're thinking, oh, I have a skin thing, but I also don't have consistent bowel movements or I got bloating or I got gas, whatever, or heartburn. That could be related. There's a good chance it's related. So we need to work on that gut health as well. And lastly, uh, using specific evidence-based nutrients at a therapeutic level, very helpful. Um, and so that's why I love using these CanFred products because they're evidence-based and it gives us a great idea of, or gives us um, a therapeutic level at which we need to, to use these products. And therapeutic meaning the right dosage for you. You can find me on Instagram. I'd, I'd love to see you guys follow and, and you can reach out to me and ask some questions there as well if, if, this, if, if I don't get to them here. Um, and you can also email social at canprev.ca or info at canprev.ca for more questions. But follow me on Instagram, Dr. Roy Givens, Facebook, same thing. You can check out my website too. But mostly check out canprev uh, on Instagram. I love their Instagram page because it's not just products, boom, 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 coming at you. They have great recipes and great other tips that can help your overall, overall um, health and well being. <clears throat> great team at CanPrev. So let's open up the floor. People have been writing in questions, and um, Christina and Lotus have been helping with those. Let's open up the question box. Q and A's. Uh, this one first question at 4.05, at, sorry, at 7.05 p.m. Being that the skin is the body's largest organ, should one worry about the long-term effects on other organs as a result of the absorption of topicals such as hydrocortisone? <clears throat> yeah, that's a good question. And I, I believe, I believe that the cortisone that is, that is, um, applied topically. Usually if it's like one or 2%, I believe that the research says that there's, there's no long-term effects, but I'm not hundred percent sure on that one. <clears throat> I've noticed I have a lot of angiomas on my skin. I feel like I'm young, 37 to be dealing with this. They are everywhere. Any suggestion on how to prevent more? Yeah. Um, angiomas. I'm not super familiar with angiomas. I would like, I think you need to, to see someone more specifically on this to make sure that they're angiomas. Um, and uh, there's other, probably other lifestyle, dietary and nutritional things that you can be doing to help with this suggestion. That's not very, um, you're not really, that's not a very pointed, helpful answer, but uh, that's a very specific question. I think you need to see someone else. Um, for further assessment there. Can you take biotin and silica supplements? Yeah, you can take biotin and silica supplements. Yeah, for sure. What is the difference between collagen and a collagen booster? Collagen booster. I'm not really sure what a collagen booster is. Do you need to take both? Um, so even without knowing what a collagen booster is, um, taking, taking a collagen peptide along with silicon would be a great combination. So a collagen peptide, again, it's ready to work. So it's a activated peptide um, and it tells fibroblasts to make more collagen, okay? So silicon is there as a cofactor as well. That's going to be a great combination. 
Um, so maybe collagen booster is silicon. What is your opinion regarding the effectiveness of cod liver oil for omega-3s? Um, I don't use cod liver oil just because it's people don't like to take it. Okay, using using an omega three, uh, using an omega three with a specific EPA to the condition at hand is important. Okay, so if your condition is, um, you know, something super inflammatory, you want something with a good EPA in it, with a high EPA. Okay, uh, if it's if you have some sort of neurological condition, you want something with a high level of DHA. Okay, so cod liver oil, it depends on the EPA and DHA content in that. This person writes in, what about biotin? Yeah, I think this question was um, answered in the pr uh, presentation, but biotin is vitamin B7, um, and it is a great cofactor for hair and skin and nails. Absolutely. Any advice on best time of day to take collagen? Um, anytime it's consistent. <laughs> I take mine in the morning just because it um, it's, goes well with my coffee. That was more than awesome. Thank you. All right. I have perioral, per, perioral dermatitis at age 62. Hormonal imbalance or inflammation. What do you suggest? I suggest first see someone about that because it could be a hormonal imbalance and or inflammation. Okay. So 62, um, it'd be great to get some hormone testing done on you for sure. The products that we talked about tonight, like, yeah, those are, those might help with the skin around, around the, uh, around the mouth. Okay. Um, usually a dermatitis is an inflammatory situation in any, in any situation, wherever the dermatitis is, dermatitis means inflammation of the skin. Uh, so, you know, working on inflammation, but hormonal imbalance could be there too, contributing. Uh, there could be a cortisol, uh, a cortisol component there as well. So modulating that inflammation and staying hydrated. Thank you so much for a great person. You're very welcome, Francine. Thank you. If silicon is so abundant and readily available, as you mentioned, then is it even necessary to supplement silicon? Yeah, this is, I love these questions. So yeah, it's a, that's a legit question. And so is it readily available in the diet? It's, it's abundant in our body, right? Um, and it's available in the diet as well. So this is where getting a specific silicon can help even further. Okay, so you get monomethanol silanotriol. Um, that is a very specific silicon, um, and that can that can help with specific situations. So if you don't have a skin condition, then you probably don't need to take silicon. But if there is a skin condition happening, then we can use silicon to help heal that area, address the cause, and then take the silicon away. Okay. Will this reduce psoriasis? That's a pretty general question. It might help with the skin integrity. Um, sorry, this, I should be more specific. These products should help with the skin integrity, but if you don't address the immune component of the psoriasis, then you won't really reach, you may not reach full resolution there. Okay, good luck with your psoriasis. Um, I tend to get a lot of pimples on my, on the back of my arms. I find that dry brushing my skin helps them diminish them. That's awesome. What do you think may be causing this condition? So if they are pimples, then there could be a hormone related component here. Uh, there could be also be a, um, a food related component too. And also like a liver, a liver condition or not a condition, but a liver um, health picture as well. So when we are not eliminating, <clears throat> we're not eliminating toxins um, really efficiently, then it can, then we can try to get rid of them out of the skin and then pimples can happen in certain areas of the body. So back of the arms um, is one area that I've seen before, like back knee, that's also another one. <clears throat> 
yeah, um, anything else there? I've heard, uh, sorry, I know, I've heard ceramides have been shown also to be helpful with acne to help that recovery. And make sure that these, these pimples that are on the back of their arms are actually pimples because there's sometimes there's something called um, uh, ker uh, keratin pull. Sorry, the name is escaping me, but make sure they're pimples and not like some other bumps that might be coming up. I put collagen in my smoothie every morning. Is that okay? Do you recommend taking it separately? No, put it in your smoothie. That sounds good. Easy way to get it and get some other good stuff in your, in your life too through your smoothie. I have alopecia areata. What supplements will help? Depends on, on, on who you are. I can't just say, take this. It'll help your alopecia areata, unfortunately, because alopecia areata is a, it's an immune issue. It's not a hair issue. So it's an immune issue that is affecting the hair. Okay. So we need to look at why is this person losing hair? And in the meantime, trying the hair, the healthy hair uh, product to help kind of, kind of help that symptomatically might be helpful for you, depending on what stage of the air, alopecia areata you are in. Working with a naturopathic doctor is really great for this because uh, we do have more than just supplements that can help with hair loss. Like we can do things like uh, you know, PRP injections, or um, I've heard of other people doing platelet-rich plasma with Rogaine, those kind of things. What is the treatment for rosacea? Yeah, so rosacea, skin inflammation on the on the face, very specific to like this area right here. Um, what I found was rosacea. I look straight to the gut, and if you Google SIBO and rosacea, like small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and rosacea, you're going to find a lot of information on that one. <clears throat> but again, treating the uh, helping the integrity of the skin and controlling inflammation with omegas and hydration and other nutrients like zinc, that's gonna be helpful. Is these products help, help uh, alopecia areata? Just answered a question on that one. <clears throat> what is the difference between silica and silicon? That's a good question. So silica is, uh, I believe it's, the, it's a larger molecule. Silicon is an element. So the person writes, I have no hair on my arms, elbow down. Is this an issue? What should I be looking at? I, I don't know. I don't know why, um, why you might not have any hair on your arms from the elbow down. Uh, if this is, you know, look, we need to look at the skin and you know, what's the skin look like? Is that, is there, a, maybe this is a contact issue where you have you know, tight sleeves and there's some sort of reaction happening between the um, washing detergent that you're using. I'm not sure. You might have to uh, get someone to look at those arms and then give you a bit of an answer, a better answer. What is the difference of uh, between Verisol bioactive collagen to other collagen? So the Ver Verisol bioactive collagen peptides are active peptides at a very specific weight, okay? Other collagen, you know, other collagen could be uh, collagen proteins. They could be collagen proteins and peptides. It could be collagen proteins and other ingredients, but the Verisol bioactive collagen is a registered trademarked um, ingredient that is ready to go for you. <clears throat> this person says, thank you, thank you. Thank you for attending tonight. What's the treatment for rosacea? So we talked about rosacea just a moment ago. What product can you take or put on your skin if you get an allergic reaction or rash? <clears throat> what natural product if you have an allergic reaction or rash? I mean, there's always those um, over-the-counter hydrocortisone creams if depending on how fast you need relief. Um, you can also use things like, um, I love this one called Dermamed. They have a couple lines of, of uh, skin creams, but if you're having allergic reaction, 
like got to make sure that this isn't an emergency situation. So if you feel like it's you're getting hives all over your body and uh, your throat's closing up, your tongue's tingling or something, please go to a doctor as soon as you can to get that figured out. <clears throat> I put collagen in veggie soup, so it's in the heat. Would that lose some of the benefits? Uh, probably not. So if you're using um, if you're using the bio, the Verisol bioactive, um, if you're doing if you're using the Verisol bioactive collagen peptides, it will not lose the integrity of those um, collagen peptides. So put it in your soup. That's a great idea. Great way to get that into um, people that don't want to take supplements. <laughs> this person says, I think you may be correct about the liver. I once did a detox kit and did alleviate them. So that's great. Congratulations. Uh, what product do you recommend to balance immune system? That's a pretty open-ended, pretty uh, big question. And so balancing the immune system. So in this situation, there's so many things that I could say. I think supporting the immune system, actual like normal function. Let's just assume that this is someone asking like, what can we do to support the immune system? I'm going to change the question a little bit on you. Um, I always love to support the immune system with things like vitamin D, okay? And the CanPrev Immunomulti is a great little multivitamin that can support that immune system. But other than that, like, that's a very specific to the person type of question. There are so many collagen products by CanPrev. How do you know which one to take? Well, it depends on what's going on. If you want your... If you want to use a collagen for your skin, then college, um, uh, collagen beauty is your, your go-to. There's one by, uh, there's one for joints, there's one for bones, and, and there's one that is a broad spectrum. So you're looking for like general overall collagen health, then take the, take the, uh, the broad spectrum one. If you're looking for joint specific ones, take that one. It is a different, um, it's a different size of collagen peptide. So it's more specific to the joints than the skin, for instance. This person says, I took silica in the past and it caused slight incontinence. I was wondering if silicon would do the same. Um, I have not seen it do or cause incontinence. What supplements do you recommend for vegans? Um, the first thing that comes to mind is vitamin B12. Easy thing, get it tested, see how you're doing. Maybe you don't need to supplement for, for uh, with B12. That's the first thing that comes to mind. But honestly, it depends on what your diet's like. You can be a vegan and have a pretty crummy diet. So there might be some other nutrients that might be missing for you, okay? <clears throat> That's a great question for your naturopathic doctor at your next visit or your first visit. I see ceramides being used in beauty products a lot lately. What are your thoughts on topical ceramides? Are they effective at all? Uh, and tonight we talked about internal ceramides. I feel like topical ceramides might be helpful too. Um, yeah, I mean, that depends on the delivery system of them. So it depends on like what their, what their, uh, um, oh my gosh, what they're mixed with. So that the product that's being applied, what's mixed, uh, what's the ceramide mixed with there? What is the age limit for these products? I ordered for them to work. What is the age limit for these products? I order for them to work. Age limit, there is no age limit. You can be any age. If you use collagen for joint and cartilage, three kilodalton, that's the one I'm using, will it also help the skin as do the collagen beauty products? It will, it will be specific to the joints, but there will be some skin, there will be some um, effect on the skin not as much as a two kilodalton uh, collagen, okay? So two kilodalton collagen, it has higher affinity. So it's more likely to move to the skin and be uh, active there, okay? So the, the three kilodalton collagen peptide will move to the joints over the skin first, but there will probably be some overlap. <clears throat> Does taking zinc chloride and copper one to eight can be cleansing to the body and toxins are eliminated through the skin in the form of these small pimples? 
taking zinc and copper, uh, it's always good to take copper with zinc, uh, if you're, especially if you're taking zinc long-term. Uh, zinc does a lot of stuff, especially with inflammation. Uh, I'm not sure what, I think this question means, does taking zinc and copper help eliminate toxins through the skin? Specifically those two nutrients, I don't know if they're going to help with that specifically. I think assessing like liver health, very important there. Um, there could be other things going on with the liver. Yeah, and also looking at your overall kind of inflammatory load. You could also add in maybe some like omegas in there, but uh, why, are, why would someone be inflamed? That's the question that I would have. Why, why are you inflamed? Like, is it dietary or is it, is it, is it stress or is it an autoimmune disease? I don't know. If I have osteoporosis, which is the best collagen to take? Collagen bone by a Canprev would be a great option for you. Is eating sprouted wheat bread good for the skin? If you can tolerate wheat bread, um, eating sprouted wheat bread, sorry. I don't know if it's good for the skin. I wouldn't say eat sprouted wheat bread for, for the skin. That's not my first go-to there. But I think eating sprouted wheat bread is probably more well tolerated for your gut than eating non-sprouted wheat bread. Can you repeat the, what five kilodaltons would target? You said three kilodalton targets the joint. Five kilodaltons will most likely target the bones. <clears throat> So we ripped through some awesome questions. Those are some awesome, awesome questions. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I'm just gonna check the chat here. Here's some other questions. Looks like our, it uh, looks like Christina and our CanPrev natural health panelists have been really busy. Here's some other questions. What is the relationship between skin health and gut health? Any foods that will reduce the effects of this? Any foods that will reduce the effects of this? So first one, skin health and gut health, a very close connection here. Um, this is where I would personally look very closely with someone with skin issues, okay? Uh, with any skin, with any chronic type disease is look at the gut. There is a, to answer your question, there is a very strong relationship, okay? If you have, if you have a, a, a gut that has, that you've had like multiple antibiotics through, or you've had food poisoning, or you've had parasites, or you've had, or you have a crummy, a history of crummy diet or alcohol use or smoking even, it can affect the microbiome, which correlates to the skin or reflects on the skin. Any foods that would reduce the effects of these supplements? Um, no, no, I don't think so. No, this person says, thank you so much for the presentation. Learned a lot, awesome, thank you. What's the speaker's email address? My email address is drrorygibbons at gmail.com. Thank you for the webinar. Thank you, thank you, great. Are there any foods that should not be consumed while taking healthy hair that could interfere with getting the full benefit of it? <clears throat> um, not that I can think of, not any foods that would, would impair the benefit of that product. What will help with hyperpigmentation? Uh, looking at what, so hyperpigmentation, um, what is causing the hyperpigmentation? Uh, I would support that skin with uh, probably collagen and ceramides would be my two that I would go for. There, does it mean collagen pills is not as good as powder form? Depends what the collagen that is in the pills, okay? So if it's collagen peptides in pills, I don't know if there's any difference there, um, but most collagen from what I can see comes in powder form. 
If you're not able to tolerate collagen powder, try the liquid. How to treat acne skin? What causes that? That's a, such a great, I love this topic because there's so many different areas we can look at for skin acne. And so it depends on what is um, giving you the acne issue. So in this situation, like ceramides are gonna be really great to help the integrity of the skin around acne, okay? But there can be a hormonal component to acne. Um, in women, this can show up around the jawline. Um, and if it's a food thing, it can just kind of be on the forehead or on the cheeks. Gut health on this one on acne for sure. Would these products help with stretch marks? Uh, they might. Yeah, they actually might. Um, a collagen, I would say collagen might be helpful for that situation. I have arthritis. Collagen for joints is good. Is there anything else I should be considering? Uh, something that is, so movement, first of all, movement is always beneficial. Um, and anti-inflammatory type herbs would be helpful. Magnesium and zinc also really good for inflammation and, and uh, pain control there. Curcumin is something you might want to look into as well. How do I clear wrinkles around the mouth? So collagen is great for wrinkles. Um, well, it depends on what the cause of the, the, the wrinkles is, but collagen is gonna help for any wrinkles. Collagen is gonna help the integrity of this, the dermis below the, hyper, below the um, epidermis, okay? And so when you increase the integrity there, then it, then it helps hold up the tent that is the outer layer of your skin, okay? Um, then you add in, you can add in ceramides there. Um, you can add in ceramides, that'll help retain the water. <clears throat> what do you recommend for irritated skin along bra and pant lines, possibly due to sweat? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, you could try changing your, um, changing your, your laundry detergent. You can even try something topical. Um, you can also try like using an omega-3 to kind of help the inflammation and the hydration at the skin might, might improve the integrity of the skin there. For the past year, I've had skin irritations on my back, which are very itchy. I've tried a number of things, including homeopathic and nothing seems to be really working. Oh man, sorry to hear that. Any suggestions? <clears throat> yeah, omega-3s would be a great place to start. Um, if it's itchy, I immediately think of, of like a histamine picture here. Okay. So there might be, you may need some immune type support, like vitamin C is good for, can be good for itchy, um, skin, you know, things like curcumin, that's also helpful quercetin and nettles. Those are two good ones as well that can help kind of get rid of the itchy ness by uh, by modulating the immune cells themselves. Good luck with that. Itchy skin is really hard. It's really difficult to deal with, especially when it's on your back and you, it's hard to get at. Anna says, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. <clears throat> If small molecular size of two, two kilodaltons is required to target skin, three for joints, five for bones, then will taking just a two supplement also fit or help joints and bones or is it specific? So they, they are specific. Like, like we said in the presentation there, like the size of the kilodaltin or size of the uh, peptide will be specific to the area of the body, okay? But there will be a little bit of like overflow, but the, the two kilodaltin supplement will be more effective at helping skin than at helping bones. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that was answered already. <clears throat> I 
I have a mite infestation on my skin five years ago, but it went away with buckthorn oil and zinc. That's awesome. I know it's an immune issue. What would you recommend? Hmm. Immune support. So like I was just saying before, like uh, vitamin D is always good. Um, that's a great one. Uh, Omega-3s. These are things that you can take every day that are safe and that are, are great for general health. Zinc, you can take zinc every day, just make sure there's copper there. Uh, there's some products out there that have zinc and copper in them. So use, so those ones are really helpful. Is curcumin better than turmeric? Well, curcumin, this is a great conversation. Has anyone answered that? No. So curcumin is from turmeric. Okay, so curcumin is an extract from the herb turmeric, okay? So curcumin, um, if you're looking for a curcumin product, looking for curcuminoids, that's what the constituent actually is uh, at 95%. That's what, that's what I look for when I prescribe or uh, recommend curcumin to patients. Adding turmeric into your food. Yeah, it's a good idea. Like it'll help like your antioxidants. It's a good antioxidant, but as far as, you know, looking at uh, pain and inflammation, uh, you need something higher dose such as curcumin, okay? Should I take collagen full spectrum liquid and the collagen beauty at the same time? You could. Um, I don't know how much of a benefit you're going to get by taking both. Okay, so if I was in your situation, I'd probably take collagen full spectrum liquid and then maybe add in uh, the silicon. <clears throat> what is the best use on psoriasis? Uh, we talked about psoriasis already, but um, you know this is an immune concern, so we need to look at the immune system. But you can use things like collagen, omega threes, and I would say silicon to help the integrity and the inflammation at the skin. This person says, I have arthritis, osteoporosis, and aging skin. I'm a mess, happy face. <laughs> no, you're not a mess. Which collagen would be best? I would go with the full spectrum collagen for you, Brenda. All right, I think I have, I think I've looked, I think I've, um, answered all the questions. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Um, I've had a really, really great time talking to all of you and so many great questions. Um, I really, really appreciate it. And again, if you're, if you want to connect with me, you can go to Instagram, give me a follow at Dr. Rory Gibbons. Um, you can also you can also um, connect with Canprev uh, at, uh, at Canprev on Instagram and Facebook. Send them a message, social at canprev.ca or info at canprev.ca if you want to ask any more questions. Um, thank you again so much for, for coming tonight. I really appreciate it and have a wonderful night. I'm gonna go and uh, make some dinner. All right, you guys have a good night. Thank you so much. I'm gonna hit stop now. Thanks again, everyone.